Good. If you recall in our first lecture we said data mining, data simulation and prediction are parts of a continuum. Data mining relates to development of models. Almost all the models that have come to be originally arose from considerations that can be related in one way or the other to the concept of data mining as we understand it today. Once the notion of a model was well established, the notion of being able to use the model to create prediction came about. Once we are able to predict, we would the, the, the interest became improving the quality of prediction became fundamental became um, 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 a problem of fundamental importance. How do you improve the quality of prediction? You need to use the data. So, data simulation is the process by which you can fit the model to the data so that the model can be calibrated to make reasonably good prediction. So, I have I have created the model, I have uh, observed the data, I have created the assimilated model. What is next? To create prediction. So, in this course we are going to see the various aspects of the quality of prediction, who controls the quality, how what is predictability, what are the uh, in why is the interest in predictability studies and that is the theme of uh, this last set of modules. So, first we would like to be able to split our discussion of predictability into deterministic predictability where deterministic refers to prediction generated by a deterministic model. Stochastic predictability relates to predictability of uh, 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 analysis of predictions arising from stochastic models. So, As a starting point, we are going to talk about what is called error dynamics or variational equation, which we have already alluded to when we talked about 4D war methods. So, we will quickly start developing some of the basic tools that we, we would need in, 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 in the analysis of deterministic predictability. Let x k plus 1 is equal to m, m of x k alpha be a deterministic model x naught is the initial condition alpha are the parameters. Now, let us consider the model running from one state called x naught bar another state called x naught. So, that is one prediction there is another prediction. The trajectories in, in in is also called orbits. So, let x k bar let the sequence x k bar the sequence x k b. So, what is the sequence x 1 bar x 2 bar x i bar here is x 1 x 2 x i. <coughs> so, let us consider two orbits or two trajectories generated by the model starting from two different initial conditions. Let epsilon k is equal to x k minus x k bar. Therefore, the initial difference is epsilon naught. The initial difference is epsilon naught. Then this difference is epsilon 1, this difference is epsilon i, this difference is epsilon k. So, what is epsilon k? Epsilon k is the difference in the forecast of the model at time k induced by the difference epsilon naught in the difference in the initial condition that is used to generate the two different forecast. So, epsilon k is called the so if the epsilon naught is the error in the initial condition epsilon k is the induced error in the state of the system at time k. Why is this important? 
in many of the 4D war based methods as well as forward sensitive methods within the context of deterministic dynamic data simulation scheme our goal has been to be able to estimate the initial condition. The estimate of the initial condition based on finite samples will always have errors. Therefore, if you used one set of observation I will get one estimate for the initial condition if you use another set of observations I will use another set of initial conditions. So, no matter which method you use if you are trying to estimate the initial condition from a finite set of observation the estimate will not be equal to the true value that I would need to be able to make better forecast. In other words estimates I have always errors embedded in them. So, you can think of epsilon naught as the error in the initial condition estimate. So, if I if I want to give some life to this trajectory let x bar uh, let x naught bar be the true unknown initial state. So, this could be the true trajectory this could be the trajectory this this is the predicted trajectory the, this this could be the predicted trajectory the predicted trajectory is different from the true trajectory because the initial state that is used to generate the prediction was different from the true state. The initial state estimate so you can think of x naught as the estimate of the initial condition the estimate epsilon naught is the error in the initial condition. So, the error in the initial condition however small it is it is going to be reflected in the forecast I am interested in the error dynamics. So, the evolution of epsilons induced by the model is called the error dynamics that is the title of the this slide. So, I would like to be able to now derive an equation for the evolution of epsilon based on the evolution of the true state as well as the predicted state. So, what is that we one we would expect if the error in the initial condition is small if the prediction at time k the error the, 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 um, is closer to the truth state that means the error in the prediction at time k is also small in other words small initial errors leads to small errors in the forecast at future time then you would say the model forecast is more reliable. If the error in the initial state explodes in time then the quality of prediction given by the model deteriorates in time. So, what does this relate to it relates to the sensitivity of the model to the variations or errors in the estimate of the initial condition. So, if the initial errors are magnified by the model that means the model is very sensitive if the initial errors do not grow, but grow goes down to 0 that means the models are more stable. So, stable models can be used to create better prediction, but not all models are stable. So, the quality of prediction depends on essentially to the sensitivity of the model to errors in initial condition. This is the fundamental theme of predictability analysis. This is the fundamental theme of predictability analysis. <coughs> so, that is the uh, 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 pathway we are going to be taking in this set of slides by, uh, that describes analysis of deterministic predictability. So, let x k plus 1 actual model using uh, is the actual model starting from the state x naught. Now, to a first order approximation I can say the unknown true state is equal to the known prediction plus epsilon k. So, it is again a first order theory. <coughs> so, x k is equal to this x k can be replaced by the true state plus epsilon k alpha. So, here what is that I am assuming alpha is the parameter you know if I change the alpha the solution changes. So, I am going to pretend for a time being I know alpha precisely and I have used alpha the precise value of alpha if there is going to be a forecast error it is all due to only errors in the initial condition and not the errors in the parameters. So, I want to separate 
I do not want to assume errors in too many things. Again I want to emphasize the forecast errors can come from errors due to three sources one errors in the initial condition errors in the parameter or errors in the model. I want to be able to enjoy analyze each one of them separately. So, in this case what is that we are interested in assume the model is perfect deterministic assume I know all the parameters in the model absolutely precisely. So, if there is any forecast error that is directly attributable to only errors in the initial condition and the errors in the initial condition where do they come from they come from estimates. While data simulation schemes gives you reasonably good estimates optimal estimates in some sense because the estimates are derived out of finite number of samples the 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 estimate from the finite set of samples may only be closer to the true estimate true value still that could be a non zero error our aim is to be able to see how the model treats this more often inevitable error the error coming from estimation of the unknown initial condition based on finite samples. So, that is the kick that is the real key. So, if I now express this map in the form of a Taylor series it can be seen this is the base value this is the perturbation. So, from here if I from here <coughs> if I so, please also remember x k plus 1 bar is equal to m of x k bar plus alpha. Therefore, this equation this equation becomes this because this is equal to x k plus 1 bar x k plus 1 minus x k plus 1 bar is epsilon k the right hand side is becoming uh, the Jacobian of m at time k at time k means what at, at evaluated at x k times epsilon k. So, this becomes the dynamics for the evolution of the error where d k is essentially d of x k of m I did not want to complicate the notation. So, d of x k of m is simply d k. So, what does this tell you epsilon 1 is equal to d 0 m epsilon 0 epsilon 2 is equal to d 1 m epsilon 1 which is equal to d 1 m times d 0 m times epsilon naught. What is this? This is the Jacobian evaluated the first state this is the evaluation at the next state. So, it is the product of Jacobians. This equation 3 in mathematics is called the variational equation. In meteorology literature it is also called the tangent linear system. So, Tangent. So, in, in the context of in the context of uh, 4D war we consider tangent linear system essentially with respect to understanding the propagation of perturbation. Here there we induced we induced we thought of inducing a perturbation initially to be able to correct the forecast errors. Here there is no correction there is no data there is no um, um, we have already done the data simulation. So, I have a model x naught be the estimated initial state I am going to run the model from this estimate I am going to compare the performance of an assimilated model with respect to the unknown true state and that is the analysis we are trying to do. So, this is the post data assimilation analysis of model forecast to be able to see how the initial errors are treated by the model. So, I am naturally interested in 3, 3 efforts to the dynamics of evolution of the model errors. So, if I iterate 3 I get this expression what is this expression if I picked 2 instances in time yeah uh, I am sorry this is 0 this is uh, time yes and this is time k I would like to be able to express how the error at time s is related to the error at time k and that is the relation. So, s could be 0 or anything else. So, this is general expression though this tells you how the errors at 2 instances in times separated in time are, 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 are related by the dynamics d, d of k colon s of m is simply the product of the Jacobian evaluated along the trajectory from time s to time k. This matrix has a special name it is called a propagator matrix 
what does it do? It tries to it tries to relate the the errors between two different instances in time. The propagator matrix is simply a product of the Jacobians. Now, I am going to introduce a numerical measure. Please understand yep, the error epsilon k. So, I have now understood how the errors propagate to a first order accuracy through the model. Now, but errors are vectors. We would we understand certain scalar measure better than vectors. So, I am now going to introduce a scalar measure that tries to that tries to quantify the properties of errors and that is done by a quantity called Rayleigh coefficient. The Rayleigh coefficient is simply the ratio of the square of the energy norm of the error at time k plus 1 to that at time 0. So, in the in the in the in the in the, in the previous slide we related the error at time k plus 1 to error at time s. Yes. Error at time k plus 1 epsilon k plus 1 is a vector error at time um, yes is a vector yes in general could be 0 or anything any number less than greater than 0. So, yes is greater than 0 less than or equal to k. So, that is essentially the range for s. So, epsilon k plus 1 is given by the product of Jacobian from k to s of m times epsilon s energy norm I am trying to evaluate a numerator with energy norm based on an SPD A the bottom line SPD B. So, A and B let A and B be two given symmetric positive different matrices evaluate the numerator using the energy norm based on the matrix A evaluate the denominator using the energy norm based on the matrix B in principle A and B could be equal, but the treatment is um, um, is as simple when you do not have to consider a and b. For example, what could be the thing in meteorology I would I would like to be able to say hey initially I am interested in pressure, but at time at a later time I may be interested in certain vorticity. Initially I may be interested in temperature difference at a later time I may be interested in rain. So, what do A and B bring to the uh, 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 bring to bear on the problem? I can cons I, I would like to be able to consider the sensitivity of the rain at a future time and it depends on a temperature distribution at the previous time. I could be I'm, I may be I may be interested in um, 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 some quantity at time at a later time and its sensitivity based on another quantity. Therefore, at this stage when I am trying to talk about quantities sensitivities I do not have to make them to be the same. Therefore, Rayleigh coefficient what is it? It is simply the ratio of quadratic forms. What is the quadratic form? So, the numeric so R k plus 1 epsilon is essentially equal to epsilon k plus 1 transpose a epsilon k plus 1 divided by epsilon s transpose b epsilon s that is exactly that is exactly the relation that 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 is involved in here. Now, please understand epsilon k plus 1 and epsilon s are related through the model the relation through the model is given by the product of the Jacobian along the lines. So, how does the initial of uh, so what is that the, you, you can think of it now suppose I have an grid I have an initial condition I have a model I am so I'm, I'm going to introduce a thermal bubble in a small locale in the at the initial time in involving certain small number of grid points. So, that is a perturbation of temperature distribution initially. How does the model reacts to the thermal bubble at a time in the future how does this thermal bubble introduces other changes in the model. So, that could be one way of thinking about thinking about this ratio. So, A and B in general are two symmetric positive matrices. This ratio is called is the celebrated uh, uh, Rayleigh coefficient in matrix theory and that comes to our our 
uh, uh, that is a very useful measure for us to be able to consider predictability analysis. So, I would like to be able to understand the behavior of this ratio. Now, let us see what this ratio uh, represents. This ratio in general represents a measure of the sensitivity you can you can see is the energy in some quantity at a later time related to the energy of some other quantity at the initial time. So, this ratio captures the spirit of the sensitivity that is involved in the predictability analysis. Suppose, this ratio remains less than 1 okay, this ratio is a scalar right if this ratio remains small for all time beyond s what does it mean the error does not grow. If the error does not grow what does it mean the, 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 the predictions are pretty darn accurate. On the other hand if this ratio grows in time what does it mean the errors the initial errors magnify. Therefore, analysis of the properties of this Rayleigh coefficient for appropriate choices of the energy norms of the numerator and the denominator essentially provides a very good clue to the quality of forecast generated by the model that is the that is the that is the secret of using Rayleigh coefficient. So, in order to further analyze the Rayleigh coefficient let us concentrate on the propagator matrix what is the propagator matrix it is a product of the Jacobian from time s to time k let us call that matrix a for the sake of simplicity in notation. I am also going to assume the model uh, uh, Jacobian is non singular if the model Jacobian non singular means what the model is well formed non singularity of the Jacobian at every point along the trajectory goes to attest to the well formed nature of the model itself the model sometimes the model could be screwed up how do you measure what is the measure of the screw up of the model look at the Jacobian the model actually gives you a solution you try to evaluate the value of the Jacobian along the trajectory if the value of the Jacobian remains full rank the model is well formed if the model if the if the rank of the Jacobian along the model varies then the model is not well formed model. So, I am assuming the model is well formed in the measure in the sense that Jacobian along the trajectory are non singular. Okay, now, A is a square matrix please 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 realize that A is a square matrix even though A is a square matrix in general A is not symmetric. A depends on the starting time S and the starting time K. So, if I vary any one of the timings A changes, but for the analysis I am keeping S fixed K fixed. So, A is fixed. So, A transpose A and A A transpose are the two Gramians coming out of this model both of them are SPD why both of them are SPD if each of the components of a component matrices in this product are non singular the product is non singular if the if, if a matrix is non singular its Gramian is full rank the Gramian is not only full rank is also symmetric and positive definite these are all immediate conclusions we have alluded to several times earlier especially within the context of development of SVD singular value decomposition. So, let <coughs> v 1 to v n be the eigenvalues this is the eigenvectors of the matrix A transpose A. So, A transpose A v is equal to v lambda v v transpose v transpose v is i. Now, I am going to define a new vector u i which is equal to 1 over lambda I am using the similar formalism uh, as we did in the SVD. The only difference is earlier we defined SVD for the context in the context of matrix H which is rectangular. Now, I am talking SVD within the context of the matrix A which is square. H is a single matrix with the forward operator A is a complex matrix is a product of matrices along the trajectory. If I assume each of the matrices each of the Jacobian matrices are non single A is non single. So, I am just trying to reinforce the idea where a comes from. So, if V i's and lambda i's are the eigen vector eigen value pair for A I can now define a new mat, um, vector u i u i also is an n vector which is 1 over square root of lambda i times A V i. From this derivation so I am now going to compute A A transpose u i 
if you substitute the expression for ui and simplify it I, it turns out i get 9 so what does 9 say a a transpose u i is equal to lambda i u i. So, what does it mean? If v i's are the eigen vectors of a transpose a u i's are the eigen vectors of a a transpose both the matrices share the same set of eigen values. In this context lambda the, I, the lambda i's are the eigen values of a transpose a as well as a a transpose both of them are matrices of, of, of the same size. So, square root of lambda i is called the singular value that is the definition. So, singular value of a matrix is the square root of the eigenvalue of the Gramian that is the definition. And the square root of the, uh, the eigenvalues of the Gramian are all going to be positive if the Gramian is symmetric positive definite. A Gramian is symmetric positive definite if the component matrices are of full rank. So, full rank condition essentially tells you the problems are well formed. And that is the condition we have been looking at all through full rank matrices all good things in life and and and, and that is exactly the kind of theory we have developed. So, lamb, square root of lambda are called the singular values v i's are called the right or forward singular vectors u i's are called left or backward singular vectors these are the general nomenclature that is well understood within the applied mathematics linear algebraic context. <coughs> now, from 8 sorry from 8 sorry I am going backward. I would like to talk about some of the uh, uh, properties of equilibria. From 8 I can rewrite my equation for the definition of ui this way. Th th there are n such if I collected all the relations the matrix form it becomes the matrix version. So, 11 is the matrix version of 10 therefore, a transpose a is given by this decomposition because u u transpose u transpose u they are all identity u is orthogonal v is orthogonal therefore, I get this expression. So, the columns of v are orthonormal system. So, what is that we, we are now going to do? We have been doing the analysis in the general coordinate system given by the standard basis which is e i. What is, what is the standard basis? e i is equal to 0 1 0 and this is the ith location i for 1 to n that is the standard basis. If I have any other basis I can do the analysis in that basis why would you change the basis if the analysis in the new basis can be made simple can be made simple nothing is lost. In fact, lot may be gained by changing the coordinate system from the standard to a given coordinate system. So now, we are going to gain by changing the analysis from the given simple coordinate system to an orthogonal system defined by v the columns of v what are the columns of v they are the eigen vectors of the matrix a transpose a. Given a space that we should always have an n dimension n basis vectors if the basis vectors are orthogonal it becomes orthogonal basis if the basis vectors are not orthogonal it is it is a basis but doing arithmetic in non orthogonal basis is little bit more involved. So, we are simply changing from one orthogonal basis to another orthogonal basis and 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 that is going to throw a lot of light on the behavior of the behavior of the Rayleigh coefficient. So, what is that what is the transformation we are going to be talking about now please understand epsilon s is the initial error at time s v is the new basis. So, I am going to transfer epsilon s to alpha. So, what is alpha? Alpha is the new vector alpha and epsilon n are referred to the same point in this space epsilon s is the coordinate of the same point in the original basis alpha is the coordinate of the point in the new basis whose columns whose 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 basis vectors are columns of v and these two values of coordinates of the same point in the two coordinate system are related by the expression in 13. Therefore, now I am going to 
re express my value of the Rayleigh coefficient at time k plus 1 with respect to the Rayleigh coefficient at time s. This is the definition of the Rayleigh coefficient in the standard basis which is 14. In the transformed domain my Rayleigh coefficient takes this form. So, what is that I am going to do? Please rem remember my a is equal to d colon s of m. So, a transpose is equal to d k s s transpose of m. Also remember my epsilon s is equal to is equal to v transpose alpha. So, if you substitute all this 14 becomes 15 14 becomes 15. What is the real kicker here? The real kicker the 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 the, the numerator and the denominator get simplified. What is that? A transpose a v is equal to lambda v because v the columns of v are the uh, what eigenvectors of that. Therefore, if I multiply this by v transpose a transpose a v that is equal to lambda and that is exactly what is occurring in the numerator in the numerator. Therefore, this complex matrix in the numerator becomes simplified as a diagonal matrix in the numerator. We also know v transpose v is equal to v v transpose that again comes from the orthogonal eigenvector that is equal to i the denominator gets simplified by this. Therefore, I have decoupled both the numerator and the denominator from the dependence and so in, in, in here what are the what are the various values of a I am assuming I am assuming a is identity uh, I am I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I am um, I'm I'm, I'm considering the energy norm I do not I, I do not think I want to go back right now sorry. So, I hope this is clear now the the expression for the Rayleigh coefficient is given by 15. Now, what is the uh, so denominator 15 what is that is the inner product of inner product of alpha with itself. The the numerator is simply a quadratic form of alpha with it through diagonal matrices. <coughs> So, what is the uh, 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 um, so now what is that? So, alpha is a vector. So, alpha is any vector that is going to represent my my, my epsilon s. So, I am going to now consider a normalized vector. So, the 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 norm of alpha defined by this I am going to set to be 1. What does this mean? If I have a vector here, I can consider the normalized part of it. So, that is essentially a normalization the, the direction is more important than the magnitude itself that is the idea here. So, I am going to consider the ratio in 15 when I confine my attention to alpha unit vectors that is the that is whole that is the whole uh, point of the game. So, in this case the numerator becomes 1 therefore, r k plus 1 alpha is essentially is essentially the numerator which is alpha transpose lambda alpha which is again given by lambda i square root of uh, uh, square of uh, alpha i square. From here the following inequality becomes uh, be becomes uh, 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 follows directly this is the value the actual value. Since the sums of uh, uh, since the sums of alpha i square is 1 since the sums of alpha i square is 1. So, you can readily see lambda i alpha i square i is equal to 1 to n is less than or equal to is less than or equal to maximum over i of lambda i times alpha i square i is equal to 1 to n and that is equal to 1. So, that gives rise to this. This is also write minimum over i of lambda i square times summation alpha i square i is equal to 1 to n that is equal to 1. Therefore, lambda 1 is the maximum eigenvalue lambda n is the minimum eigenvalue it readily follows r k plus 1 alpha is less than or equal to lambda 1 and lambda n where lambda 1 and lambda n are the maximum and minimum value of the eigenvalue. So, what is that we have done? We have narrowed the values that the uh, 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 the ratio of the energy norms of the errors can take by by moving simply from 
the standard coordinate to the new coordinate formed by the eigenvectors of the Gramian A transpose A assuming A is full rank. So, this is a very 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 nice very nice treatment of of, of the analysis of of the analysis of the uh, Rayleigh coefficient. Now, what is that we are interested in? We are interested in determining what is called the average rate of growth of errors from time s to k plus 1 when k goes to infinity that is of interest. Let us look at this why are we interested in the average growth of, growth of errors? You, if I commit an initial error if the error grows how much error I can afford to crap my forecast such that forecast still meaning is still meaningful is the question. For example, in weather forecasting we have made tremendous improvement over the past 50 years, but we still do not know how to make monthly forecasts. Our models are some of the best known models in the last 100 years. We have the best computers, we have all kinds of observation systems we still cannot make predictions over the. So, the predictions that we make in today with all the things we know with all the technologies available computers, sensors, satellite models and everything else we can probably believe 3 to maximum 4 day forecast. So, what is 4 day? 4 day is the predictability limit. So, what does it mean? Today I am going to make 1 day forecast, 2 day forecast, 3 day forecast, 5 day forecast the error in one day forecast is there, but small the error in the two, two, two day forecast is slightly larger the error in the 5 day forecast is more. Why do you do not want to do the 10 day forecast It's not that I do not know how to make a 10 day forecast I can make the 10 day forecast too, but the error by the time 10 days into the future comes into being is so much that it, it, it dwarfs the signal. So, there is a signal on which the forecast error superimposed if the magnitude of the superimposing error is 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 comparable to the signal then signal plus noise overwhelms the information. So, it is a it is a classical study in the engineering literature called signal to noise ratio. So, in any estimation problem in any detection problem we will always like to be able to analyze the signal to noise ratio and we would like to be able to maximize the signal to noise ratio. So, in some sense the the Rayleigh coefficient tries to capture the spirit of the computation of signal to noise ratio. So, so one measure one question is to how far does it take to be able to double the initial error. So, what is the norm of the initial error? What is the norm of the error at a future time? How long does it take for the initial error the norm of the initial error to double that is called error doubling time. If the error doubles in 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 10 days after 10 days the error is even more than double. So, can I can I can I can I make a forecast that the error is doubled than the initial one? No. So, what is the amount of error you may be able to tolerate? How long how far the error uh, um, uh, grows? How fast the error grows? Okay. Now, error rate of growth varies from time to time to time to time. So, if the error rate of growth varies from time to time to time what is one measure average rate of growth, growth of errors. So, to understand the quality of prediction we need to understand the predictability limit what is the predictability limit? Predictability limit is the limit beyond which errors overwhelm the signal if the errors overwhelm the signal the prediction is useless. Now, here comes some of the basic thing some processes are predictable perfectly the lunar solar eclipse. IBM price I can predict for tomorrow, but I do not think I can predict the price of an IBM stock day after tomorrow is much more volatile there are lots of factors that depend on. How do you predict the the price of a barrel of, of, of crude oil? The barrel of crude oil depends not only on the cost of production, but also the cost of transportation from place A to place B either you transport the unpurified base liquid or purified form, but then the cost of crude oil is, is controlled by so many events in the world. 
if there is a war in the Middle East or if there is a problem in the Middle East, we believe that the supply may be may be may, may, may be affected, the price immediately goes up. So, there are a number of factors that affect the price of, of a barrel of crude. So, the barrel of crude predictability of it is extremely difficult problem. So, uh, likewise the weather prediction we have gained enough knowledge about the weather the behavior of it. So, that we can make good short term prediction long term prediction we try to do, but we are not able to do long term prediction which are reliable. For example, I cannot predict seasonal weather precisely I do not let alone climate. Why it is not because we are not intelligent because the model we use exhibit extreme sensitivity to the initial condition. So, the initial condition you use to generate the forecast have even smaller errors if the model is very sensitive to small errors the errors blow up in time. <coughs> so, that is the fundamental theme behind uh, uh, predictability analysis. So, the interest now goes to analyzing what is the average rate of growth of errors that is important. <coughs> so, what is so given given yes as a starting point fixed this is k I would like to get to go to infinity. So, from a fixed starting point if I want to be able to make asymptotically large uh, 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 values of time and if I want to be able to make forecasts for such large values of time over that time what is the average rate of growth of errors as seen through the model. To that end I am going to define a new matrix. So, what is this matrix? You remember D K S M which we have also called A I am going between A and this whenever we need to. So, this is simply A transpose A that is the Gramian. S is fixed, S is fixed, it depends on M. I am going to let k go to infinity. So, I am interested in the long term value of the Gramian A transpose A. I am also interested in the in the 2 k minus 1, 2 times k minus 1, the root of this matrix. Please understand please understand given a matrix A I can consider A square given matrix A I can consider A to the power of 1 half given a matrix A I can consider A to 1, one over alpha for some alpha. So, this is the matrix I am I am I am I am considering 1 over 2 times k minus s what is k minus s k minus s is the is is the time difference between the starting point and the final time k goes to infinity. So, k minus s goes to infinity. So, this this matrix plays a fundamental role. The eigenvalues of this limiting matrix are called Lyapunov vectors and the corresponding eigenvalues of this limiting matrix are called Lyapunov numbers. We are going to talk about these two, but before we go there I would like you to be able to appreciate the definition of this matrix. So, what is this? It is a product of the I am sorry it is the product of A transpose A, A transpose A is the Gramian, A transpose A depends on S and, and, and K, I am keeping S and M the model fixed, I am letting K goes to infinity, I am interested in the in the in the 2 times K minus S the root of this product matrix and that is the matrix that limit matrix, that limit matrix has an eigenvalue eigenvectors the eigenvalues are called Lyapunov vectors, eigenvalues are called Lyapunov numbers. Lyapunov is the famous Russian uh, mathematician who, 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 who propounded the theory of stability um, in, 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 in the early decades of uh, uh, 20th century and, and so in his honor it is called Lyapunov vectors, Lyapunov numbers. <laughs> the natural logarithm of the Lyapunov numbers are called Lyapunov indices. So, let us look at this number. So, this is called Lyapunov indices. Lyapunov indices. So, what is the Lyapunov index? It is the 
let us look at this now let us look at this ratio. What is this ratio? It is the norm of the error at time. So, if I have time s, yes, if I have time k, I have epsilon s, yes, I have epsilon k plus 1, the norm of um, the ratio of the, so this is equal to d k times s of m of epsilon s. Yes. So, the norm of the error epsilon k plus 1 divided by epsilon s. Yes. So, what does it tell you? by by running epsilon s through the model I am able to change the initial error. So, then the norm of the ratio is a number and this number depends on the time interval k minus s I am going to normalize this by 1 over k minus s s is fixed k goes to infinity. So, this ratio is the you can you can think of it as the average. So, this average value lambda is called the Lapinov index and this Lapinov index essentially tells you the average rate of growth of errors that makes sense I want to think about it now think about it now. So, epsilon k plus 1 by epsilon s what does it mean that is the rate of growth of error during the time from s to k I am trying to divide it by 1 over k minus s. So, that is the average rate of growth of errors. So, what is the meaning of this Lapinov index? I am going to introduce it by illustrating it on a scalar dynamics. In fact, the entire theory of dynamical chaos in deterministic system is centered around this notion of Lapinov indices, average rate of growth of errors, sensitivity to initial conditions. So, what is the idea? If a system exhibits a sort of extreme sensitive to initial condition, that system cannot be used to generate prediction for long intervals of time. If the system exhibits less sensitivity to initial conditions such systems can be used to create long term forecast. It turns out most of the models of interest in climate studies, most of the models of interest in um, oceanography, um, atmospheric sciences exhibit do exhibit extreme sensitivity to initial condition that is the reason why we still are not being able to make 10 day forecast, a monthly forecast, seasonal forecast. We still have not captured all aspects of the model uh, uh, sensitivity. So, the current models exhibit extreme sensitivity that is the reason why we are able to do what we are able to do. So, to understand this let us work a simple example let x dot is equal to f of x be a dynamical system. X, if x naught bar is the given initial condition that is the unknown that is the true value of the state. So, this is x naught bar. So, from here I can compute the solution x of t I have x naught this is x naught bar I can compute x of t. So, barred quantities are true unbarred quantities are coming from estimated values I have an initial difference which is epsilon naught I am doing the entire theory, but some based on a simple uh, one dimensional models. So, the dynamics of the error growth the variational equation for this case becomes y dot t is equal to Jacobian of f times y of t. This y plays the role. So, instead of instead of epsilon I am sorry instead of epsilon I am going to consider this as y naught. So, let y naught be the initial difference let y of t be the difference at time t epsilon we use in the context of a disk discrete time y of t I am going to use it in the case of continuous time. So, y of t is related to uh, uh, the rate of growth of y of t is given by this equation. This equation is a linear dynamical system the linear dynamics varies along the trajectory again. So, this is the Jacobian if you discretize this in, in the interval 0 to t there are n sub intervals let the sub intervals of time tau. So, n tau b t. So, this is 0 this is t I am going to divide it into intervals where the sub intervals are time um, are, are of length tau and t is equal to n tau. So, now I am now going to assume that this equation which is given by 21 is such that during a given interval of time my d t of f remains constant. 
that means the interval of time tau is so small that my Jacobian does not change too much within that small interval of time. Therefore, I am now going to assume the d t of f in the in, 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 a, in a small interval going from k tau to k plus 1 tau it remains constant and that constant value is l k. So, what is l k? l k is the constant value of the Jacobian of the system during the time of evolution from k to k plus 1 or k tau to k plus 1 tau. If tau is small this is a reasonably very good assumption to make. Therefore, y dot therefore y dot d t f f y t by combining 22. So, 22 when substituted in 21 becomes an equation like this sorry becomes an equation of this type that is a linear equation. This equation depends on k you can see l k depends on, on this interval. I can solve this equation very readily that is y k plus 1 is equal to e to the power of l k tau y k. So, if, if, if at time k this is time k plus 1 if y k is the initial condition I would like to be able to compute the solution at y k plus 1 the matrix l k remains the same. So, the the solutions at two intervals of at two end points are related by this equation 24. If I iterate this from y naught to y, y, y n I get this relation you can readily see by iterating 24 and using the definition of l k being constant in that inter, in, in that domain y n is equal to e to the power of summation j is equal to 0 to n minus 1 l j times tau y naught. Now, from the definition of the Lyapunov index the Lyapunov index at time t I am assuming my, 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 my forecast horizon is capital T. So, when my forecast horizon is, is, is capital T uh, from the definition of 20 no it should be tau pointing to 0. So, this should be sorry as tau goes to 0 not, not T. So, T is fixed tau goes to 0 as tau goes to 0 n goes to infinity n tau represent the total time capital T. So, n tau is always capital T please understand n tau is capital n tau is capital T. So, as tau goes to 0 n goes to infinity, but the product is fixed T the product is fixed T. Now, I am taking the logarithm of y n divided by y naught what is y n absolute value of y n is the error at time capital N y naught is the error at time 0 I am taking the ratio it is the logarithm of the ratio of the magnitude of the error at time n to time 0. So, why is are the errors now I am interested in the, in, in, in the errors that affect the prediction. Now, if I if I if I substitute 25 the expression for y n in here and simplify what does it become it essentially becomes the average of L j that is L bar t. Uh, that is a beautiful expression that comes from a simple. So, lambda t which is the function of t, t is finite is becomes L bar t. What is L bar t? It is the average value of the Jacobian along the trajectory that is beautiful that is just beautiful. So, lambda t refers to the mean growth of errors during the interval 0 to t. Now, what do I want to get the Lyapunov index? Let t go to infinity that is the definition of Lyapunov index. So, what is the Lyapunov index? Is the, is the limit of capital uh, is the limit of lambda t with the capital T going to infinity and that gives rise to that gives rise to the definition of average rate of growth of errors in unbounded intervals. So, what does that tell you if lambda is defined that way you can now see that y t at any time is equal to e to the power of lambda t times y naught. Clearly the error grows when lambda is greater than 0. So, what does it mean? one can analyze the quality of prediction by analyzing lambda. If lambda is greater than 0 what does it mean La average rate of growth is greater than 0 the average rate of growth is greater than 0 error grows. <coughs> so, in systems where lambda is greater than 0 there is an inherent predict predictability limit. In systems where lambda is less than 0 there is no predictability limit I can predict for the whole future. So, that is the import of this analysis. <coughs> so, I, I, I'm, 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 I want you to 
go back and understand the theory reasonably well. So, we, gen we, we presented a general theory we are trying to illustrate the general theory based on a very simple scalar continuous time dynamics. We have introduced the notion of average growth of errors. So, it is the average rate of growth of errors over asymptotically long intervals of time that helps to indicate the quality of prediction generated by the model. So, lambda depends on the model. So, lambda is going to be able to give us the guideline how to believe and how, how long I can believe the forecast generated by the model. So, how do we define the predictability limit? The predictability limit T p is given by T p is equal to 1 over lambda. So, if lambda is positive my prediction can hold water only up to the forecast horizon T p which is equal to 1 over lambda. So, what is 1 over lambda? If y of t is equal to e to the power of lambda t y naught if t is equal to t p why not if t p is equal to 1 over lambda y of t is equal to e times lambda z, why not. That means, the ratio of the magnitude of the initial uh, ratio of the magnitude of the error at time t to the initial error is the order of e. Hey, that is a particular limit. This limit for atmospheric models used to be 1 or 2 days about 3 4 decades ago now has gone to of the order of 5 to 7 days. It is this improvement from 1 to 2 days to 5 to 7 days is the achievement by the meteorological community by bringing in the science of data simulation and analysis of analysis of predictions created with the model. <coughs> So, you can see the role of data simulation, the role of errors in the initial condition, the role of, uh, of, 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 of trying to measure the ratio of the uh, uh, errors at two different times and, and, and understanding the rate at which the errors grow. These are some of the beautiful uh, mechanisms using which one can uh, uh, create estimations of how good a forecast is that is the, that's the ultimate key. So, creating forecast is one thing trying to attest the goodness of the forecast is something else. We have learned how to create forecast by so many different methods of data simulation. The analysis of data simulation is not complete until we understand the predictability limit how long the predictability how long the prediction can hold water that is the idea here. So, that is for time greater than T p T p is the particular for time greater than T p the error in the initial condition will overwhelm the signal corresponding to the base forecast. Clearly lambda is a function of x naught so <coughs> and the given value the parameter lambda varies as the function of the initial condition also the parameters. Now, I am going to talk about how to compute lambda for real systems. <coughs> So, we have seen the importance of Lyapunov index. Now, I am going to talk about a renormalization strategy by which one can implement an algorithm on a, any model to be able to compute the Lyapunov index. Once a, once a quantity is of great interest, we need to be able to compute it. So, let us let us look at an algorithm now. Let epsilon naught be the initial value of a perturbation based on the initial condition x naught bar. So, initial condition is fixed given model is fixed alpha is fixed. So, please understand my model is x k plus 1 is equal to m of x k alpha. So, m is fixed alpha is fixed I have initial condition that is also fixed. <coughs> so, if I am interested in the ratio epsilon yes to epsilon naught sorry epsilon naught epsilon yes to epsilon naught I can essentially express this a product like this. So, what is that epsilon yes divided by epsilon yes minus 1 times epsilon yes minus 1 divided by epsilon yes minus 2 likewise epsilon 1 divided by 
the epsilon naught all the cross terms will leaving behind this is equal to epsilon s divided by epsilon now therefore this ratio is equal to the product of the ratios between two successive times. So, what is that we are interested in? We are interested in 0 e, yes I am interested in trying to multiply uh, uh, the, the product I am sorry I am, I am interested in the ratios two successive times the product thereof the product thereof gives you the product from epsilon s to epsilon 0. So, you can really see this product is given by this ratio. So, then from our definition what is lambda the Lyapunov index? The Lyapunov index is is the average of the log of the average of the log of the. So, I have to take the log of both sides if the log of the both sides log of the product is the sum of the logs. So, logarithm of a b is equal to log of a plus log of b. So, if I took the logarithm on both sides of 30 I, I, I get an expression. So, the ratio of the log of both sides as epsilon naught goes to 0. So, I would like my epsilon naught to be as small as possible I want my n to go to infinity what is the n the number of discrete intervals of time and that is the limit of the average of the logarithm of the amplification along the trajectory that is that the basic idea. So, I would like to be able to compute this if I can compute 31 using a clever algorithm I am done and to be able to express 31 the key is in expressing the ratio of the errors uh, ratio of the norms of errors at time s to time 0 as the product of ratios at consecutive times. So, this is the product of ratios in the consecutive times the product of the ratios consecutive times the numerator denominator cancels leaving behind epsilon s and epsilon naught. So, that is a very clever way of writing the ratio of the norms at time s to time 0. <coughs> so, this is this is one of the ways of, of computing computing there. So, how do we how do we do that? So, here is an algorithm now. So, let epsilon epsilon naught let epsilon I am sorry that is right. Let epsilon naught be the initial error then run the model one step interval time compute the error epsilon 1 compute the ratio the norm of epsilon 1 by norm of epsilon 0. Then run the model from epsilon 1 to epsilon 2 then multiply this by norm of epsilon 2 times epsilon 1 continue if I continued I get epsilon s divided by epsilon s minus 1 that is equal to norm of epsilon s divided by norm of epsilon 0. So, by running the model one step at a time by running the by computing the ratios by taking the product of those ratios taking the uh, 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 the logarithm of the ratio I can I can I can in a way estimate lambda. So, this provides an easy algorithm to be able to to be able to to be able to uh, uh, evaluate lambda. So, this is what is called renormalization strategy. Now, I am going to give you well known information about certain facts about Lyapunov indices for force ok. I have not defined what a chaotic system now I let me let me let me talk about uh, the definition of a chaotic system. When do I say a dynamic system is chaotic? If given a dynamic system if you compute the Lyapunov index if the Lyapunov index is positive in some part of the domain then it is called chaotic. Why it is chaotic? In a chaotic system error grows on an average rate. If the error grows on an average rate then the predictability becomes very 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 difficult. So, what is the measure of the that predictability is Lyapunov index. So, Lyapunov index is being positive is one of the signatures of the chaotic system and also lambda greater than 0 is an indication of the fact that the system is extremely sensitive to the initial condition because the initial condition errors grow at a rate lambda. So, Lyapunov index sensitive to the initial condition being chaotic all these things are related concepts. So, given a forced <coughs> chaotic system the first Lyapunov index is positive which is responsible for the sensitivity of the initial sensitivity uh, 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 responsible for the sensitivity of the initial condition. Now, I only talked about it 
I, a Laplanov index you may ask what is the what is the uh, first Laplanov index <laughs> again that requires a little bit of an explanation. You remember we talked about the 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 matrix <coughs> let us go back in the definition of Laplanov indices we talked about this matrix in 19 lambda m is a matrix a matrix have m different eigenvalues. So, I am now if I talk about the analysis of the first eigenvalue that leads to first Laplanov index second eigenvalues leads to second Laplanov index. So, if a system if, 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 if the order of the system is, is, is 3 in general it should have 3 Laplanov indices I only talked about the, the, the maximum value of the Laplanov index or the Laplanov index corresponding to the first eigenvalue. So, in n dimensional system has n eigenvalues n dimensional system can have n in um, Laplanov indices. So, if there are n Laplanov indices you can talk about the first second third and so on I am now going to talk about some of the well known facts about Laplanov indices for different types of systems. So, <coughs> for a dissipative system the sum of all the Laplanov index must be negative that is a fact. <coughs> this can be proven it is proven on many good books on introduction to chaos theory. For this for this class of system one of the intermediary Laplanov indices is also 0 I am going to illustrate it further these are some of the well known facts I am trying to summarize explaining each of this will take at least one or two lectures, but here I am trying to collect many of the many of the results. The growth rate of the so what is like the lambda 1 tells you. So, if I have a three dimensional system I have three Laplanov indices lambda 1 tells you the great growth rate of errors along one line lambda 1 plus lambda 2 refers to the growth rate of surface areas <coughs> lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 refers to growth rate of specific volumes that is where different Laplanov indices come into play. So, so likewise the sum of the first k Laplanov indices tells you the rate of growth of k dimensional volumes. So, these are all very many simple facts. <coughs> so, now I am going to talk about some of the specific values for specific systems. Many of us are introduced to the notion of Lorenz 1963 model. It was Lorenz in 1963 for the first time introduced or, 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 or accidentally found the presence of chaotic system. So, for it is one there is this 1963 model of Lorenz is one of the most thoroughly analyzed and understood uh, systems of differential equation it consists of 3 <coughs> uh, uh, ordinary differential equation coupled with nonlinearity. it is also a dissipative system. <coughs> the because it is dissipative it is in general does not um, go to uh, infinity it is it is it is it is it the, the, uh, the orbits remain bounded. <coughs> the first Laplanov index for this is 0 0.09 therefore, e to the power of 0 0.9, 0 0.9 is equal to 2.4596. So, what does it mean any line segment any error along the line or any uh, uh, yeah any error along the line will magnify at the rate 2.4596 that is the average rate of growth of errors, but the total Laplanov indices for this is minus 11.9 that means the three dimensional volumes decrease at this rate decrease at this rate the life. So, what is the idea here the volumes decrease the the attractor where the upper uh, where the where the, orb, uh, where the uh, orbits of the system exist the 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 you cannot predict where it, the orbits will be at what time because it is intrinsically chaotic because lambda 1 is positive. So, that is the overall characteristics of what is called the Lorenz system and examples of values of 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 of, of uh, uh, the first Laplanov index. If the first R Laplanov indices are positive, then lambda prime p is equal to sum of all the Laplanov indices which are positive. 
two states that are infinitesimally close diverge at the rate lambda bar e to the power of lambda bar p times t. So, this is again the average rate of growth this is an extension of y t being equal to e to the power of lambda t times y of t. So, in this case it is y t times e to the power of lambda p times t times y naught where lambda p is equal uh, 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 I am sorry lambda bar p sorry where the lambda bar p is equal to the sum of the first r sum of the first r Lyapunov indices the, which are positive. So, the sum of the positive Lyapunov indices refers to the average rate of growth in this case the predictability limit is given by 1 over lambda to the uh, 1 over lambda bar p. Now, you can see if there are more than one Lyapunov index that is positive lambda bar p is larger if lambda p bar, lambda bar p is larger 1 over lambda p bar is smaller. Therefore, if a system exhibits larger number of positive Lyapunov indices in such system the predictability limit is much smaller. If a system does not have any positive Lyapunov index then then I can make predictions for a long periods of time predictions for the long periods of time. So, that is the ultimate essence of the theory of Lyapunov index. <coughs> now, I am going to give you these are exercise problems, but I am going to quote you some of the values of the Lyapunov indices of some of the very well known mathematical models for the logistic model with the parameterization for the Lyapunov index is 0 0.6931 that is positive. So, logistic models are chaotic because they are extremely sensitive to initial condition. <coughs> there is a model called Henan model. Uh, the Henan model has the first Lyapunov index is a two dimensional. Um, 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 I'm sorry. Um, yeah, for the Henan model, I have the 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 lambda one is 0 0.42, lambda two is minus 0 0.162. For the Lorenz's already talked about first one is 0 0.9 second one is 0 last one is this. So, these are some of the examples of simple systems there is a difference between the properties of the sim logical logistic model is a discrete type model that tries to capture some of the principles of population dynamics. <coughs> Henan model is a mathematically oriented model it may not correspond to any particular physical system Lorenz's model how did he obtain the three differential equation he obtained it from starting with some uh, vorticity equation uh, oh I'm in this case not vorticity equation I am sorry it, it, is, it, is the, it, is, it is the it is the it is the it is the heat transfer problem um, uh, and and from that he applied the spectral methods and he from that derived the three sets of equation whose eigenvalue uh, whose Lyapunov indices are positive 0 and negative. So, Lorentz's model theoretically was the first one to be able to exhibit the notion of Lyapunov index and the role of Lyapunov index in predictability studies. Here are some other properties of Lyapunov indices I am going to now create a comparison okay, a comparison steady state behavior attractor Lyapunov index dimension of the attractor these are summaries of very well known result. A steady steady uh, uh, a steady state for a dynamic system can be an equilibrium point what is an equilibrium point there is an attractor to which all the solutions come and settle down those steady state are called equilibrium point. Equilibrium point the attractor is a point the Lyapunov indices are all negative so, therefore the dimension of the attractor is 0. For a periodic orbit it is a cycle there is one Lyapunov index is 0 rest of them are negative the dimension of the attractor is 1. I know I have not talked about the dimension attractor much more uh, 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 elaborately, but I believe I wanted to provide you a quick summary of the notion of predictability and, and, and some of the models for which the predictability can be answered. So, what does it mean if a system exhibits um, an equilibrium predictability is complete if a system exhibits periodic orbit the predictability is complete I do not have to worry about predictability I can predict for all for all time. If the system exhibits a, um, a steady state with respect to periodic orbits the the attractor is said to form a, 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 a torus in which case two eigenvalues are, are 0 
uh, the rest of the eigenvalues are, are, are negative the dimension of the attractor is 2. For a chaotic system the attractor is called fact fractal I have not introduced even the notion of a fractal object fractal object is a complicated object. In the case of a fractal object uh, uh, in the case of a chaotic attractor such as the, the Lorenz's attractor the, the, the at least one Lyapunov index is positive uh, um, the rest of them um, um, could be 0 or negative and the sum of all the overall Lyapunov indices totally to be together could be less than 0 that, indi that indicates the system is totally uh, uh, dissipate, uh, dissipative and the dimension of the attractor is non non integer that means if they have what is called fractal dimension. So, the notion of fractal attractor fractal dimension chaotic behavior they are all interrelated with each other. With that we conclude our discussion of deterministic predictability I would like you to uh, pursue these uh, of this exercise what is the exercise consider the simple logistic model this is a very good exercise consider alpha uh, consider this is not alpha a the same parameter a as in here consider the range of parameters from 1 to 4 x naught is not is, is equal to 0 to 1. So, I would like you to pick an x naught pick an alpha compute lambda. So, plot this is a very good uh, computing exercise Lyapunov index versus x naught for a given value of alpha sorry for a given value of for a given value of alpha. So, alpha is equal to 1 draw this curve alpha is equal to 2 draw this curve alpha is equal to 3 4 draw this curve you will see in, you, you will you will you will verify when alpha is 1 and 2 and 3 the system does not exhibit any sensitivity in initial condition, but when alpha is equal to 4 the system tends to exhibit extreme sensitivity in initial condition and that is the model we talked about. With this I, am con I, I conclude our discussion on predictability of deterministic system as a quick summary uh, predictability analysis is of great interest after we assimilated data into the model. Once you assimilate data into the model I am going I, am, I have the capability to make prediction the question is how far for how long the prediction will hold water the, the answer to the question of how long the prediction will hold water depends on the intrinsic property of the model itself it relates to the sensitivity of the model solution with respect to the initial condition. This sensitivity is essentially related to the forward sensitivity we have already defined. So, forward sensitivity analysis and analysis of Lyapunov index are intimately associated with each other even though I am not exploring that discussion in this in this in this in this set of lectures. One way to be able to uh, summarize the initial condition sensitivity is through a parameter called Lyapunov index. Lyapunov index could be positive 0 or negative for dissipative system the sum of all the Lyapunov indexes must be less than 0 at least one Lyapunov index is, is 0. Um, if one of the Lyapunov indices the greatest Lyapunov index is positive such systems are supposed to exhibit extreme sensitivity. It turns out many many of the models that are currently being used in geophysical sciences to predict different types of geophysical phenomena have exhibited extreme sensitivity to initial condition that is the reason why we are not able to make long term predictions despite 50 plus years of progress in model building as well as data collection and data analysis and with all the advances we are able to increase the predictability limit to about 5, 6 no more than 7 days these days. So, what does it mean? The prediction problem continues it continues to dominate it continues to be a problem of great challenge. And, and, and one of the goals of this study models data data simulation all relates to improving the predictability limit. So, what is the ultimate goal of doing all these things I would like to be able to make long range prediction very reliable long range prediction until such time we achieve the ability to make long range prediction our job is not done. And there is no telling how long it may take. So, it all depends on it all depends on very many different aspects of very many different aspects of models data data simulation sensitivity to the model to initial conditions so on and so forth. 
So I have provided a simply uh, 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 rudimentary ideas. I simply scratched the surface on predictability. It is a very deep discipline. I would encourage you, hope this will encourage you to be able to look at some of the interesting uh, 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 books related to predictability analysis as well as chaos theory. But as a starting point, this exercise analyzing logistic model by choosing various alphas and choosing various x naughts and trying to compute will be a very good opening game in your understanding the theory of predictability. Thank you.